A lot of people think that we need to get coffee out of our lives because coffee is bad. I'm bad, I'm bad. I see patients coming and saying, doctor, I'm quitting on sugar, I'm quitting on dairy, I'm quitting on all ultra processed foods and I'm quitting on coffee. And I'm like, why are you quitting on coffee? Um, because you know, everyone says that coffee is bad, right? No, no. There are people that cannot tolerate coffee. We're gonna talk about that. But let's get out of the picture that coffee is bad. Coffee, it's very good. It's very good for your heart. It's very good for your brain. It's good for energy. It's good for exercise. It's good for appetite, insulin, glucose balance. It's good for your liver. So coffee and all the properties around caffeine and all the properties around all the antioxidants around coffee, it's very good for our health, contrary for what many people think about coffee. So we don't have to take coffee away of our lives. There's a study that even shows that people could even tolerate five, six, seven cups of coffee in the morning without having any problem. And I'm saying in the morning because caffeine can stick in our body for a long period of time. And we don't want large amounts of caffeine at night because caffeine might pull up a lot of adrenaline and then, then it's gonna increase the production of cortisol at night and we don't want that. That's why I encourage people to always drink coffee in the morning or any beverage that has caffeine to drink it in the morning and then stop at noon so they can start eliminating all the rest of caffeine during the day. Our liver makes all that process. Some people have a fast biotransformation of caffeine in the liver. Some people are very slow for that transformation. It depends on you, it depends on me. But that's why I really encourage people to stop at noon. This study showed that even if you take five, seven cups of coffee in the morning, you're not going to have any problem, but also you're going to have cardiac or cardiovascular protection. So this is something that we need to remember. Coffee, it's very good and it's very safe for most people, but still, there are people that get, that get tachycardia out of drinking coffee. There are people that have maybe GI problems. Some people get anxiety. Then people, some people cannot sleep. Some people have different problems. Some people need to quit coffee because of very specific uh, nutrient that might be inside of coffee. It might be caffeine. It might be something else. And they need to quit coffee. And also some people stop drinking coffee because of myths. People say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit it because it causes dehydration. No, coffee might make you pee more. Yeah, but you also drink coffee in a beverage. So you're putting some water and then you're peeing some more water. But uh, studies have shown that coffee will not cause any dehydration in the body. Some people think that you might get addicted to coffee. No, people don't get addicted to coffee. People might start having tolerance to coffee, which is you're gonna need a higher dose in order to get that same effect that you're looking for. But that's tolerance. Addictions are completely different and coffee is not addictive at all. That coffee is gonna cause insomnia to everyone. No, not to everyone. I can drink a coffee at night before bed and I can go and sleep, but it doesn't mean I can drink it. It doesn't mean it's good because my system is going to have high levels of cortisol during the night. So it's not recommended, please try to take coffee until noon and then wait so your liver and so your body starts getting off from all those amounts of coffee. Some people think that coffee, it's neutral, that it has no benefits. I just told you, coffee has a lot of benefits in inner health. If you can tolerate it, it's one of those things that I really encourage my patients to start taking. But if I need to take it out for my life or if I want to incorporate other tools in which I can have all the benefits from coffee. I can bring other things into my life. Which are those? Well, the first one, maybe the most common is green tea. Tea has different varieties. You can have black tea, blue tea, red tea, white tea, uh, green tea. And it depends in every single color, the effect of the specific catechins of the specific antioxidants, but also the amount of caffeine, the darker ones, have more amount of caffeine than the lighter ones. But remember that green tea, specifically matcha tea, has very, very high amounts of caffeine. So if you're looking for a lowered amount of caffeine, look for green tea or for white tea, but not for green tea, especially matcha tea. You can also drink the stems 
of the camellia, which is the, the plant that has all the, the, the tea leaves, the stems, which is called the kukicha tea. I'm going to leave you down here a list of different uh, products on Amazon that I recommend. You can go and look for it. It's very, very delicious. It's going to give you a very soft and smooth tea without any caffeine at all, but it's very, very well balanced. I personally like it a lot. Number two is chicory coffee. Chicory coffee is something that people like because they take it, they roast it, they blend it, they grind it, and it gives you that kind of, of same smoothness and a, and a flavor that it's similar to coffee, but it's not coffee. That's why it's chicory coffee. But it's just a drink that is blended and roasted, and it's going to give you that same smoothness, but without the effects of caffeine. So that's why people try to go for those, or they go also for mushrooms. Mushrooms have gained a lot of attention recently, and there are a ton of studies coming from different mushrooms that are out there. And these mushrooms, again, when they take them, they dry them, they roast them, they give you this kind of same sensation as with coffee. That's why they say coffee mushroom. And they're going to give you all the benefits from the mushroom, but no caffeine at all. Sometimes people blend coffee with mushrooms. And now you're getting both benefits than the ones that you were getting from the mushrooms and now the ones you're getting from the coffee. Something that is very popular in the southern countries of South America, Argentina, Chile, South Brazil, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, it's yerba mate. Yerba mate has gained also a lot of attention because it's one of those plants that although that it has caffeine, and remember that it has caffeine, it has very specific types of antioxidants that are really amazing for our health. And this is one of those things that when we incorporate it in our, in our life, in our diet, when people have made studies in Argentinians or in Chile or in Chileans, they have found that this is very cardioprotective, brain protective, and it's really amazing because of the amount of antioxidants that it has. So yerba mate is one of those very, very good alternatives when taking coffee as a part of something else that you're bringing into your life. Of course, chocolate is going to be fantastic, but we're not going to go deep into chocolate because I'm trying to see for all the other alternatives that people sometimes don't go for them. And one that has gained a lot of attention also, it's kombucha. Kombucha, it's a fermented drink that has been around for centuries in Eastern medicines. And it's one of these fermented drinks that you could heat it up. But the good thing is when you ferment, you're going to have good bacteria and that it's going to be sitting there and this is going to be very beneficial for our health. We cannot say this kombucha is a probiotic because a probiotic needs to be standardized. It needs to be reproductible and you need to know for sure what it's growing inside. When you're making kombucha, when you make kombucha today, then kombucha tomorrow, and then kombucha the day after, you don't know what you're growing here, here, and here because it's going to be completely different, and of course, because it's a natural food. It might look like a probiotic, but it's a beverage with good amount of microorganisms that it's going to be good for my microbiome and for my microbiota. But it doesn't mean that it's a probiotic, but this is one of those things that when we take it without any added fruit juice, it's going to be tremendous for your health. And the other thing that it's also very good, especially in Ayurveda medicine, it's what they call golden milk. Golden milk, it's a beverage in which you take turmeric, where you take ginger, where you take things like cloves, and where you take cinnamon, and you make a drink out of this. Some people like adding coconut milk or just regular milk or just almond milk or oat milk or the one that you prefer. But they take all the benefits from turmeric, from ginger, from cloves, and they like to take it cold, they like to take it hot. But those are the things that when you want to lower the amount of, of coffee, when you want to complement, when you have to exclude coffee, those are probably the things that I recommend most my patients to take. Different from just thinking that the only thing that you can take is chocolate. Some people are very sensitive to the chocolate. So these are probably alternatives that you can take when you're not allowed to take coffee in your life. So please remember that the best way that you can have a good lifestyle, good nutrition, is when you start understanding everything that you're taking. Please remember that coffee, it's not bad. That you don't need to stop coffee. That when you're drinking coffee, 
you're not making little sins. No, you're making a great decision. But if you want to compliment or if you have to take coffee out of your life, there are good alternatives like the ones I just showed you. So please remember that the best way that you can support us, it's very easy just by sharing this video. And also remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and to click the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you guys. See you next time.